Alright, let's see if we can continue our chapter. Ah! You're expensive, my dude. Okay. Let's go do that. Boutique, boutique. That's where I work. Here I am. Oh, my eyes jumping. <clears throat> In front of me is a small store that used to be a jewelry store. And as today, it's mine. This is so exciting. Ever since Grandma passed away, I'd grown fond of the sewing machine she had left me behind. Better way of saying that. It spurred me on to sew my own clothes and found that it was actually quite fun. I pursued my interests and went to art school majoring in fashion. Grandma also left behind a large inheritance so I could purchase my own boutique after I finished art school. Damn. Okay. Ghost Hunters. I forgot. Yes! Ghost Hunters, the boutique. Or not ghosts. No ghosts allowed. And this is it, my own boutique. The bottom floor is the storefront and the floors above are my living area. Wow, that's nice. I hurry and take out my keys and open up the front door. Welcome in. Wow, terrible place. An empty large room greets me. It's stripped of any personality and it needs some touching up to do. These sentences. Wow. I'm a wizard. It's taken some time, but along with the help of my best friend Sarah, we finished the boutique. Why do we have a plaque that's <sighs> Oh, hello, Sarah. Phew, I can't believe it's finished, says Sarah as she stretches out. I like your face. It looks amazing, thanks for all of your help. I'm really grateful that Sarah also lives in the same city and helped me out. We met each other in college. She majored in photography. She's been a great friend so far. That can change. Um, well, I'm definitely up for a break. Do you want to have a drink somewhere? Oh, sure. Do you know anything close by? I ask. Sarah knows the city more than I do. <laughs> of course. It's not too far from here, but we can get there by foot. Both without, and I'm happy looking back to see my finished boutique. It's a dream come true. I'm assuming those are mirrors and not windows. Cafe La Bella. La Bella? made our way further into the city until we come across a cozy looking cafe. A little further is a very modern hospital. Weird way to describe things. It's nice to see I live so close to one. You never know when you need to go there for an emergency. I guess. Weird thing to notice. Ooh, cake. Me and Sarah enter the cafe. It's quite busy and lively with people having a cup of coffee or people typing away on laptops. I cannot read this very well but bake fresh daily two for one nice Mary our oh, menu hot cold black coffee I'm assuming that says cappuccino black iced coffee hot chocolate some kind of dark coffee I don't know that one's just gibberish who cares let's carry on we'll just order coffee I actually see a few people in a doctor's coat or nurse's outfit. I guess they come here to take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Go find us a seat. Why don't you go stand in line and grab me a cup of coffee? I patiently wait in line, order our drinks, and try and find Sarah again with the tray in my hands. I can see her sitting in the back in one of the booths. I worm myself through a crowd of people, delicately balancing the tray. I knew it. The cuts. MC is always a cut. I've almost made my way over when suddenly someone knocks into me from behind by accident. I would not immediately assume it was an accident. I would just be like, hey, how dare you? Pay for my coffee. Ah! I stumble forwards and the cups of coffee launch themselves off the tray. Right onto a man's sleeve. Could have been worse. Could have been his face. <coughs> He's a Hufflepuff. We match. Ah, wait, that's my hair. We match. <clears throat> Gah, he yells out in shock. I really don't like your hairstyle, and I don't know why. Something about it just irritates me. That was glass. The cup shatter on the floor, silencing the entire cafe. The man in front of me has his white dress shirt covered in one gigantic coffee stain. He looks fine. He's rubbing it and wincing in pain. I feel mortified and I rush over to him. 
I'm so sorry, I yell out. I pull out the tissue from my bag and hand it over to him as if that's gonna do anything. <laughs> There's no need. The man hisses at me, rejecting my tissue. This is ruined. You ruined it. I do that. A lot. It was an accident, I murmured softly. The man flicks the coffee off his finger and starts to glare at me. Huh. I suppose walking straight is too much of a task for you. This was a real... Cornier. I blush as I recognize the brand name. I don't. It's one of the more expensive ones. I'm guessing it's like Cartier. That's a brand, right? Is it? I don't know. Hmm. What can I do to make up for it? What can I do? Shut the fuck up. Sarah finally comes over to see what the commotion's about and steps in front of me. <laughs> Back off there, buddy. She apologized. No need to snap at her. Sarah's staring him down like a tiger, protecting her cubs. The other people in the cafe suddenly stop being interested and return to what they were doing. Ah, uh, I call fake. Everyone would look. If there's a confrontation, <laughs> would look. What's this? She can't speak for herself, says a man with a vicious tone. Really sad about your shit? No. Now we're mad, because Sarah's here, so we've got confidence. Of course I can speak for myself. Man gives me a snide glare in response. <laughs> she speaks, he says. Wow, you're observant. Look, I can pay for the dry cleaning bill, I offer. A clerk comes running up and starts picking up the broken pieces of glass from the ground. I thought they were cups bend down to help them feeling obligated since it was my fault after all Ugh. I don't have time for this the man says and then he briskly walks away <sighs> don't pay him any mind articles says Sarah that's just how some city folk are rude and obnoxious I bite my lip and help clean up the mess I made I feel pretty embarrassed by the encounter but me and Sarah stay at the cafe once we offered we were offered free replacements what a nice cafe I'm glad they didn't ask me to give them any sort of compensation for breaking their cups. They should, though. Putting the event to the back of my mind, me and Sarah talk about their li our lives and what's going on. Sarah's excited about a new camera that she's getting, as she's a professional photographer, which we have... We have established that she studied photography, so it would be weird if she was anything else. She's waxing poetic about all of its features and then suggests we should hold a photo shoot with my designs. This way she has some pictures to fill up her portfolio and I get to use them for my own advertising purposes. Ooh, beneficial relationship. We both eagerly talk about the specifics of the photo shoot. However, no matter how much I try, I keep wondering about that man. As I do still feel guilty about spilling coffee all over him. Don't. It's a white shirt. If you paid, like... I have no concept of how expensive white shirts really are. But if you paid like $200, that's a lot of money for a white shirt. And you get it ruined. That's kind of on you for spending that money in the first place. I saw a shirt like last week. That's a white button up shirt for women. Silk ish. Kind of chiffon I I don't really know fabrics, okay? Either way, it's a soft white shirt. 1,200 Rand. That's a lot of money. For a shirt, do you know what I can buy with that money? A lot. Jeez. Do you know how much garlic bread that is? So much garlic bread. That is a few months worth supply of garlic bread. Ugh, I'm very angry. <clears throat> he was pretty rude about it though. I guess city folk really are different. Like you lived in the country. You you grew up in the city. Cool. Okay, let's continue. 600 coins is fine. I can afford that at the moment. Things are going smoothly lately. My shop is finally getting some traction among the locals. It's not a huge milestone, but people are starting to stop and come by to see what all the fuss is about. As I'm folding some fabric, I suddenly hear the door open. It's a customer, rushing inside. Quickly, I head out to greet them with a smile. Welcome! Oh. Oh. Wait, there's another person I spilt coffee all over the other day. Is that why he's here? For reimbursement? I'm gonna kick your butt. Are you here for the dry cleaning bill? I asked him. Wait, how did he find me anyway? 
stammer, suddenly taken aback by the question, as if he wasn't prepared to meet me here. I shouldn't make assumptions. <laughs> ah, yes, exactly why I came here to this quaint little shop of yours. His voice is dripping with sarcasm. That wasn't me. He doesn't know what sarcasm is. Then straightens his back while looking around the store. He puffs out his chest and clicks his tongue disapprovingly, as if he's judging every square inch of it and he's not up to standards. He must be a Malfoy. There's a scowl on his face as he frowns at the layout of my store. It just open. Or do you want to kick him out of Ghost Hunters? You cannot hunt ghosts with us. After our little run-in the other day, I was forced to dispose of the hideous mess you made that was once called a satin dress shirt. Shouldn't pay that much for white shirts. You've obviously got another one. That's fine. I had to order a new one. And that continues. That wasn't necessary. I gulp. Oh. I could have paid for the dry cleaning or even made you a new one in return as an apology for ruining your previous one. Hmm. Don't be obtuse. Creating an entire new one when you can simply buy another instead. Ah! one of those. The man lazily flicks his wrist at me. What does that mean? <sighs> What's done is done. However, we have come to the issue of payment. Suddenly his mouth stops moving. Yeah, this definitely exact out mine also. Suddenly his mouth stops moving. He noticed a bunch of framed pictures behind the register. Is that what that is? Here's some of my childhood pictures. Weird thing to put in your store. Just saying. I treasure them quite a lot, so I proudly display them. I'm not sure why he stopped to stare, but it takes a few steps closer to investigate. How many dudes with purple hair do you know? I was convinced he's going to nag about my choice of wallpaper or framing for the pictures until I notice he doesn't have a scowl on his face as he did before. Uh, do you like my pictures? I ask instead, concerned. Because they're pictures of children. <coughs> that's, uh, that's not. I mean, I'm positive I recognize this boy. He trails off. He's looking at a certain picture of me back from when I was around eight years old and going through a tomboy phase. I know I look boyish, but for him to mistake my childhood picture as that of a boy makes me feel a little abashed. Stop. It's a common mistake, though. I quickly shake my head and reel in my embarrassment. Um, that would be me. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. He scoffs, completely disregarding what I said. Mm. I'm fairly sure that is a boy and I've met him before. Taking a backup link at him. Met me before. Glossing over the fact that he does not know how to tell genders apart. Which is fine. Just don't. Don't try. Just stop trying. Stop being... Pretending that you're right, just say, ah, and move on. Huh? What do you mean? Mm. Ah, it's coming back to me. Is it your brother? He asks. You really are dumb. However, he doesn't wait for my answer. Mm. I can see the resemblance. I'd almost forgotten what he looked like. The corners of his lips are cold into a smile, which looks infinitely better than the scowl he's been wearing all the time. Frowning takes more muscles or something, it's just working out. Still, I'm rather confused, so I prod him for some answers. Who are you? What do you mean you've almost forgotten? Uh. Right, where are my manners? I must have left them behind with my ruined dress shirt. Let it go. Ugh. The man brings a hand to his forehead, shaking his head. I don't know. I don't know. Then he looks straight. Uh, he, Then he looks, straightens his back, looking very impressed with himself. <laughs> Whatever. My name's Neil. I already forgot his name. Neil Forrester. You may recognize the last name. Yes. But I don't think the guy I'm thinking of is related to you. I also forgot his name just now. I do. Sarah told me some more about the hospital next to the cafe that was owned by the Forrester family. Are you bragging about owning a hospital? You serial killer. They seem to be quite rich and looking at this person I'm sure he grew up knowing nothing but riches. 
If he buys expensive white button up shirts, then he is rich and stupid. I'm sorry, I keep going on about this. I'm just very angry. Didn't realize this was their son. Not someone like him doing in a shop like mine. Get out. This is for the poor only. No. And you are Draco Malfoy. <clears throat> ah. All right, I'm Articles Spectacles. Spectacles. I'm sorry, I forget how to say my last name because it's stupid. Mm -hmm. And your brother, he asks, not caring much about my own name apparently. His name is Brutus, and you should be scared. He's looking at the picture again. I huff. But it's not my brother. I already told you. That's me from back when I was about eight years old. Neil looks at the picture, then back at me, then back at the picture. And it's Old Spice. His face turns into a grimace. <laughs> you lie. There's a no way. In no way does that look like a little girl to me. Stop with your gender nonsense. I feel slighted with the way he accuses me of lying, while at the same time also insinuating that I'm actually a boy. Just start. You guys are too focused on gender. There go. Are you he breathing? That's creepy, I only just noticed that. Are those pockets or is it like his boobs? I can feel my cheeks start to redden. Just punch him in the face. I'm gonna be angry. I'm just gonna be angry. I'm still upset about this shirt. Perhaps you need to have your eyes checked then because I'm very certain that's me in the picture and I'm not a boy. I was there when the photo was taken. You think I would know who that is? Stupid. Maybe my brother died, you insensitive fuck. <sighs> Sorry for swearing. Not possible, he says. I'm sure of it. We spent the entire night together at the playground until some police officers chased us off. I'll have you know I was ready to fight the police. Suddenly it kicks in my head. The purple hair, those golden eyes. Neil was that little boy from years ago. Good thing we're both stupid. The one that I met at the playground, who had run away from his parents, as if I did not just play that chapter. In case this part of it goes out later, now you remember he is the boy from the intro who we picked specifically today. This was years ago, I had basically forgotten all about it. I would not. That's a traumatic event. Wait, I remember you now, said with a laugh. <laughs> that boy that ran away from his parents because they made you study and wear proper clothing. I feel my anger melt away as a wave of nostalgia hits me instead. Huh? How do you... Neil stops. Hmm. Whoa, back off. He leans in closer to me and narrows his eyes, studying my face with such intensity that I avert my eyes out of embarrassment. Six feet, my friend. Six feet. I've never had someone look at me like that before. Yeah, it's weird when you're being scrutinized. Um, sorry about my mother calling your parents over that time. Then again, it was the right thing to do. We were children. I say still avoiding his piercing gaze. <sighs> Sudden realization the color drains from Neil's face. You? Oh wait. You? He asks in a small voice. Yes, that was me, I answer with a smile, daring to look straight at him again, and his weird pointy hair. Such a coincidence, nice to meet, see you all grown up now. Go away, pop up. I'd never have imagined that kid to be the son of the foresters. Wouldn't you have? He was wearing a like waistcoat and a tie at the age of eight. <laughs> Neil's face scrunches up in disgust. I'm sorry? There's a scowl on his face like he's been smelling something foul. <laughs> Neil's face suddenly turns bright red and he doesn't waste a second to dash out of the store. The door slams shut, leaving me utterly confused. Well, okay then. That was fine. We're just standing here being confused. 